my students, greetings. Uh, this is a discussion of phylum nematoda, the roundworms. And this is differentiated by quite a bit of new abilities and anatomy uh, compared to the last phylum, which was platyhelminthes. These are pseudocelomates. They have a fake gap in between, or they have a real gap, but it's a fake coelom. Uh, in between their three germ layers. Uh, they have three basic tissue layers that everything uh, develops from. This is an incredibly diverse group that causes a lot of agricultural, human, and uh, plant damage. Now, uh, they still do not have a circulatory system, but they do work on um, diffusion for their uh, oxygen and CO2. This is the first class or uh, first phylum that has a complete digestive system, a one way tube, which means they have an intestinal tract that ends in an anus. Congratulations, phylum nematoda. You've got there. Uh, this is the first phylum that actually has all their members being dioecious. That means that they have um, sexual reproduction. Uh, phylum nematoda also has um, a thick cuticle. It's a very thick walled uh, skin basically that allows them to be protected against many environmental dangers. Uh, when we're looking at this, they all have bilateral symmetry, um, even though they're just a tube basically. But their main uh, distinguishing characteristic besides having a full digestive system for the first time uh, is that they are pseudocelomates. The pseudocelum is this false gap, which is a gap between the mesoderm and the endoderm in their uh, development. A full coelom is one where there is a gap in the mesoderm, where the mesoderm wraps around the endoderm, helps support it, but also has a gap for uh, the outward expansion and uh, adaptation of uh, into this gap of the endoderm. So uh, roundworms are known to have this pseudocelum. So there are a lot of nematodes that affect humans as well as agricultural, and this is nowhere near the full list. Um, there is also a huge amount that uh, affect uh, animals, uh, fish, uh, all the way up to uh, dogs, cats, um, and, and horses. So uh, veterinarians have their hands full, not only identifying these, but treating them as well, because those are eukaryotic organisms that are very difficult to treat without hurting the host. We're gonna talk about a couple of these as an example for nematodes. Now, the first one I would talk about is heartworm because a lot of you have pets and we treat our pets every year with something called a heartworm. And this is for dogs and cats. Now, this one's an odd one because it's transmitted a worm by mosquitoes. That's right. Uh, these um, heartworms will actually uh, replicate to extreme sizes. Uh, it looks like all spaghetti strings, but these are individual worms that block the um, uh, the bicuspid and tricuspid valves. Uh, and so the blood basically sits in the same place and there's no circulation of the blood. This kills the animal uh, quite obviously through blockage of the pulmonary system. Uh, you can get those individual treatments every year or um, sometimes it's twice a year uh, biannually to uh, treat your animals. Uh, we do not have the same problem with uh, this infection in us, but dogs and cats do. So please get your cats and dogs um, treated. We do find that uh, it is much more likely to be found in the South, but in every metropolitan area, you will find um, this heartworm. So it is not something just from the South. You also have it in the Ohio River Valley for some reason, uh, as well as the rest of the South. Uh, the only places you don't see that uh, are most likely because they are not getting reported as much. So please treat 
your cats and dogs. This is a scarus. It looks like just a regular round worm, but these can be up to seven to 10 inches in length, and about the size of a pencil. This is also known as human lungworm. Uh, I have a different picture of one that um, one of my nursing students uh, uh, showed me the month after her class ended. She came into my office and at eight in the morning and said, look what just fell out of my brother's butt. And it was um, a long uh, scarus that overlapped the ends of a Kleenex. So it was quite large. Uh, this is uh, associated with humans um, in which they, they will have a distended stomach. And a lot of the times we associate this with poverty, but the uh, fact of the matter is, is if there is lack of cleanliness and fecal material flying about, that is a problem. Uh, I have known a couple of uh, students that worked on a pig farm that got this because the feces fly everywhere. This is a very dangerous disease as it will block the intestine. Uh, this is a picture, this is the best picture I can get of two doctors, surgeons, that surgically removed this amount of ascaris from a, uh, a tribe in Africa, a village that only had 70 people. Uh, it blocks the intestines, and this is a bowel resection where they had to cut it out because there's so many blocking the bowel. This is a dangerous thing to have. Uh, and this is apparently somebody taking a, a fermentation jar that's about three to f probably five gallons full of ascaris, um, and they taped it down just for good measure. Uh, this is called lungworm because one of the life cycle parts of this will cause it to go into the lung. Um, uh, and you can see this... Uh, this white um, dots in here. Uh, basically, part of its life cycle is that, yes, it has uh, sexual reproduction in the small intestine, and it'll block it there, but the eggs will be in the ground, so people eating dirt, mud pies or whatever, may get it. Uh, it will hatch and live in the intestine, but some of the larvae can get into the bloodstream, and they hang out there it's a cool childhood, but then sooner or later they have to grow up and uh, get to reproducing. So the uh, immature larva will migrate to the alveoli, crawl, uh, get out of uh, your alveoli into your bronchi and then trachea, and you'll cough and swallow them in your sleep. This is why it's called African or, or um, Amer uh, lungworm. Now, uh, sometimes when a person has a fever and an intense infection of this, uh, the larva will swarm out of the lungs and try to all get out at the same time. So the person will be vomiting larva. Um, let's just say that's an intense uh, amount of psychiatric bills after that. Uh, another um, uh, infective roundworm that causes disease here is called trichinosis or uh, a spir a trichin uh, Nella spiralis. And this is what it looks like inside a little cyst in muscle. It creates a home inside your muscle fibers. Yes, it has that pseudocelum here. Yay. It has a nerve cord. It even has uh, uh, this intestinal tract, a pharynx, and even a brain. Uh, but it lives, for the most part, in your muscles. Um, uh, you can get this from pig uh, uh, undercooked pork. It's embedded in the muscle, and these will release and migrate to your muscle, integrate into it, and make its uh, home in um, a very unique cell that it makes out of our muscle called a nurse cell. And this is a fascinating organism, and uh, we do not have enough uh, research into it at this point. But trichinella, really make sure to cook your pork. Uh, pinworms is a very normal one. All I need you to know is enterobus pinworm. This is... Um, uh, 
I apologize for that. There were some slides out of order. Here is the entire life cycle of um, a trichinosis. It incap uh, uncapsulates from eating raw or undercooked pork in the stomach. It then gets into the microvilli, gets into the bloodstream, and then can cause heart failure because it infects the uh, um, heart muscle and causes major damage there. It can even migrate to the uh, central nervous system and cause death there. But usually what it will do is go into these muscles, into the muscle fibers um, noted here, and change them into what's called a nurse cell. It's a completely unique cell within the body. It turns off certain genes, a lot of genes that uh, define this cell as a muscle fiber, and turn on a number of cells that will cause blood vessels to grow around it called angiogenesis. It turns off parts of the immune system so it can hide, and it just lives there in this very unique cell. And it's shown here on the right. So cook your pork. Now we'll talk about pinworms. Pinworms are basically a worm that comes out of the anus and uh, causes uh, anal itching. Kids get this from eating mud pies. So usually what the parents have to do is come in about an hour after they're asleep and um, put a piece of tape on their uh, anus because the females come out of the anus and lay eggs and then crawl back in. This causes a lot of irritation and swelling and the kid is very uh, unhappy. Uh, but if you put a little tape on there and then uh, put that on a, a glass slide, you can test for pinworm eggs. Unfortunately, it is very um, easily uh, spread. So usually the whole family needs to be treated. All the bed clothes and clothes need to be washed in a special way and washed. Um, uh, so don't let the kids eat mud pies. We also have something called hookworm. Uh, hookworm are these small worms, uh, much smaller than a penny, that can uh, enter our foot through the skin. It will actually enter our foot and bare feet. Uh, we get this through dog feces. So if we're stepping on um, um, soil or uh, grass that has dog poop on it and then we decide to walk barefoot on it, um, or around it, we can get hookworm. And basically this hookworm will cause a localized infection in the skin, but sometimes it will go into the bloodstream and then yes, that's right, we have dotted lines that go to the uh, bloodstream, to the lung, and then up and then swallowed. So it'll live in the intestine sucking your blood from the intestinal cell wall. Uh, so yeah, this is another one you don't want to get. So if your dogs get tape or, or a hookworm, you want to get it treated. This is an uh, infection through the foot of hookworm. This is hookworm in your blood sera. This is hookworm doing a selfie. This is actually what their faces look like with all these spiky um, teeth, uh, actually um, made of something other than enamel. And here's the hookworm itself. The hookworm will then, as the adult form, stick in the mucus on the intestinal tract and bite at the intestinal wall. Um, this will give uh, access to blood, uh, blood supplies, but it can also cause uh, sepsis in humans because all of a sudden 10 to the 13th bacteria have direct access to your bloodstream, um, which is not good. Here is an actual colonoscopy. Uh, freeze picture where you can see one of the worms uh, sucking your blood uh, in that and that the good thing is this can be treated it's just finding it in time before you get very very sick. The last but certainly not least of our worries is something that hopefully we're going to wipe out from uh, the face of the earth again. This is Wusheria bancrofti. Uh, this is a mosquito-borne um, infection that causes elephantitis. Uh, your limbs look uh, swollen and larger than humans. Uh, they look like something for elephants. Basically, you have a larval uh, stage that lives in the mosquito. So you have an uh, asexual reproduction in 
the um, mosquito, it is injected into us through a bite and they develop into uh, male and female worms. The male and female worms do not sit in your intestine, they sit in your lymphatic system at lymph nodes. It's like uh, burglars setting up and uh, planning heists inside a uh, police station. But if you remember, the lymph nodes drain interstitial fluid, this fluid in between cells, and return it to other areas of the body. If the um, worms will sit in those lymph nodes, they actually back up or block the drainage, causing the limb to expand and be very painful. It is hard to actually flex it. Um, and then the mosquito can bite the human and uh, be infected to pass it on. So if we have uh, the ability to stop the infection by stopping the mosquitoes from getting it, uh, by using um, um, insecticide treated uh, mosquito nets at night uh, in these infected areas, that can be very important. So here's the uh, example of uh, elephantitis. Uh, this is a rather mild case, I'm just warning you. Uh, sometimes uh, the cases can be so extreme that uh, during the Japanese occupation of the Philippines while they were retreating from the Pacific theater during World War II because we were beating them uh, and causing them to retreat, uh, some of their uh, soldiers that had elephantitis had to be left behind and some of them starved to death because they could not move their bodies enough to uh, forage for food. An extreme example of an uh, a native species that has, or a native uh, tribe that has it, uh, is somebody like this who had full elephantitis. They had to use sticks to walk around. Uh, this is treatable, and what we are doing is trying to wipe it from the face of the earth through the World Health Organization and handing out mosquito nets. Uh, instead of thousands of cases, we are now having a couple hundred, so hopefully in the next a uh, decade or so, we'll be able to wipe this from the face of the earth because it needs to get the infection from humans. So if we uh, keep the mosquitoes from getting it or passing it to humans, we will have blocked the ecological cycle of this parasite. Now, with that nightmare uh, picture in view, I will end Phylum nanotoda. <laughs>